Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. Before we dive in, I want to thank you for all your feedback, your comments, your likes. I review it all, and it really means a lot to me, so please keep it coming. This week, I've got another story for you and three great launches. All right, so my story. AWS is just getting underway, and I'm the only evangelist. I've got the title of senior manager within the organization, so the assumption is that at some point I'm going to be managing a team. Things are going pretty well, and well enough that they come to me and say, Jeff, it's time to grow and time to start hiring and building a team. Now, several times earlier in my career, I've wanted to be a really good manager. I've had the opportunity to do this before. I've read a lot of books. I've watched some really good managers and some not so good managers over the years. I've even taken some training. I think I've got what it takes to do it this time. My goal, as always, is get some really great people and then help them to be even better. I do a lot of hiring. I bring on one bright new person and they really want to be an evangelist. Now, one thing you should know about the evangelist role is most people don't grow up targeting an evangelist as a career choice. They kind of fall into it for various different reasons. Quite often they find themselves in tech, but they find that they really enjoy not just using tech, but talking about it and sharing it. But what we've learned over the years, it takes a really diverse and a really unique set of skills. So this particular person had decided to become an evangelist and had put a lot of work, a lot of energy into actually making it happen, hired them, brought them in on board, and worked with them for a couple of years, really helping them to polish, improve their skills, and getting them to, to the point where they would be really, really awesome. Unfortunately, we got to this point where we were just not making any progress, and it was, it was really clear that there wasn't a, a perfect fit w- within the job and within the role. I did all my best with what I'd learned from my training and from old managers and from all these books to to give lots of feedback and some encouragement. But we got to the point where we just all realized that it was just not a great fit. We all just kind of knew it. Now, we've learned that evangelism is a particularly unique role. We were much earlier in the history of AWS and of this particular career category. We all certainly had a lot to learn. But for me, I was getting to this decision point, and it was really unclear to me just how could I help this particular employee. It was always also really clear that we actually had to make a change. Now I got to get just a little bit personal for a, a minute. I've I've found over the years that I'm incredibly bad at just delivering bad news, and this is because I I have just a lot of empathy for the person on the other side of the conversation. As I'm thinking and practicing and trying to to decide how I'd like to send the message, I mostly think about how this other person is going to take this message or this action. This actually goes to just extremes with me. Uh, Two quick examples come to mind. I I listen to a lot of podcasts, and there's so many in my repertoire that I haven't listened to sometimes for a year or even 18 months. Some of them I've got dozens of episodes I just have not had time to listen to. But in in my mind, unsubscribing from this podcast is like saying goodbye to this person that's been my good friend. I've been listening to them. I know their voice. I know a lot about them. It's really hard to simply unsubscribe from a podcast. I I have the same challenge if there's someone I've been following on Twitter and I decide I just don't want to follow them anymore. I I just think if I undo this, they're going to message me and, and take it really, really personally. So with, with, with these trivial kinds of things, you can imagine that being a people manager for me is just really, really hard for me. I, I'm thinking about this, this person and thinking, how can I do right by them? And, and how can I actually make things better for them? And I'm, in my head, I'm thinking I've been managing people for actually several decades on and off at this point and thinking, you know, I, I, I should be pretty good at this, but realizing subtly that maybe I'm not as good. And maybe if it's, if it's causing all this just internal turmoil, maybe I'm actually not as good or as suited to this as, as I might think about it. I, I, I'm, I've got to make a decision, but I, I can't sleep. I, I'm at the point where I'd rather go to the dentist than deliver some bad news to this person. And I, I really don't know what to do. I've got to deliver the bad news, but my, my own self-image is just kind of on the verge of breaking because my, my image of like myself as a decent manager is, is now suddenly 
at, at risk. Now, I get to the point where I have to talk to my own manager, and they're aware of the situation that we don't have a, a perfect fit here and that we need to actually take some action. I just can't take this action. And after thinking about it for just a long, long time, I just realize I, I'm the one that's just not the great fit for the job. I, I just out and out go to my manager and I say, I, I'm really sorry, but I can't do this. I, I've tried for actual decades to be a people manager. I, I'm so bad at that. I'm never going to learn how to do this. I, I honestly think if I, if I live to be a thousand years old, I'm never going to get good at this. And I just kind of recount all the times that I've, I've just tried and tried to do this. And as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Jeff, you're, you're, you're like shooting yourself in both feet at, at the same time. And I'm thinking in my, my head, I'm thinking, this is like the, the ultimate career limiting move. Like how much worse can you do than just tell your manager that you like literally just suck so bad at your job that you just don't actually want to do it anymore. But I, I've got to do it. I've just got to just out, out, be out with it. So my manager's just quiet for a bit and is really thoughtful. And I'm thinking about my, my job and my role and my senior manager title. And I'm thinking, well, here it comes. I'm, I'm kind of done. But he takes a deep breath. And I'm like, okay, what's going to happen now? And he says, Jeff, you don't need to do this. And he goes on, we've got a lot of really good managers. We've just got one of you. And here's what you got to do. You need to focus on being the best possible Jeff. That's what we need. And more, much more importantly, that's what you need. He said, we've got this model at Amazon we call the superpowers. You got to be good at a lot of things. But you got to find something that you're the absolute best at in the world. And you got to be unicorn awesome at, at that. This was like, took decades of, of load off of my shoulders. All this time I'd spent trying to be good at something that I'd, I'd tried really hard and like never actually got good and never got comfortable doing was suddenly off my plate. And I, I still have my job and... I was liberated from something that, that I, I just couldn't do. So as a postscript, th this employee, working with my manager and with the employee, we actually found a new role within the organization far, far different from what they'd been doing and what they thought was good for them. We found this role that was a, a great fit for them. It, it was such a great fit that they quickly got promoted and ultimately, within that space, they ended up leaving the company and founded a, a very successful startup in that space. Worked out great for them. Now, for me, I was sure this was a career-limiting move. Turned out not to be. Liberated from not being, having to do what I was no good at, I got promoted twice. I got promoted to director and then to VP in the space of about five years. Uh, instead of doing people management, the agreement with my manager was I would take that energy and those skills and I'd be more of a mentor and a role model instead. This let me focus on the positive aspects of, of my job, took away all that, that delivery of bad news that, where I was just so bad and, and let me actually use my, my, kind of my, my interpersonal skills and my excessive empathy to, to, with, with good results and Ultimately, I, I got to just really succeed at, at being the, this unicorn. It can take decades to figure out who you really are and who you need to be. At, at some point, you do need to speak up. You don't want to get trapped in, in a box. Got to figure out where you need to go after that. But once you figure out who you are and who you want to be, you need to just be the best possible unicorn. Find that job and just rock it out to the maximum. That's my story. And now on to the launches. The first launch is something really cool and awesome called Lambda Extensions. This is so neat. It lets you integrate code into the Lambda function lifecycle. This is things like initialization of a function environment when that environment is either created or unfroze, function invocation, and then finally shut down when things get quiet. It's all built on the Lambda Runtime Extensions API. One thing that I think is really neat is you can use multiple extensions on the same Lambda function. 
The code that you write gets notified on various events, and it also has access to the logs that ultimately go to CloudWatch. So what can you use this for? You can connect up all different kinds of tools, things like monitoring, observability, security, and governance. The extensions are available from a whole bunch of different places. There's a set that we provide you. There's a bigger set that's coming from our partners. There's some open source extensions, and you can also build your own. On the partner side, we're launching with support for extensions from 17 different AWS Lambda partners. This includes AppDynamics, Epsigon, Honeycomb, Instana, Sumo Logic, and more. On the AWS side, we are launching with extensions for AppConfig, the CodeGuru Profiler, CloudWatch Lambda Insights, and the AWS Distro for OpenTelemetry. Once again, I think this is really cool, whether you're using existing extensions or you build your own. Available to you now in three regions with more to come, and you can learn more by reading Chani's blog post. The next launch is Quantum Circuit Noise. This one is super esoteric, but I found it really interesting. So here's the deal. When you create some quantum circuits, they're not really nice and clean and binary, but they have to deal with noise and uncertainty. When this noise gets into your quantum circuits, it can introduce some errors and it can ultimately affect the results. So to deal with this, as you build and test your quantum circuits, you need to plan for the noise, you need to code around it, and most importantly, you need to test in an actual noisy environment. So to do this, we have a new simulator, it's called the DM1, that's short for Density Matrix Simulator for Amazon Bracket. This is pretty powerful. You can simulate quantum circuits with up to 17 qubits, and you can run up to 35 simulations in parallel. There's a ton of really deep math, all of which is totally beyond me, but this thing called a density matrix, it describes the quantum state in the presence of noise with a set of probabilistic outcomes as, the, as you transition from state to state. Despite all this jargon, it sounds to me pretty easy to use. You define your circuit, you define a noise channel, and then a noise level within that channel. You apply it to specific gates in your circuit, and then you run your simulation. To learn more, you can read the what's new, and we also have a complete example in a bracket notebook. Finally, we have an update to Amazon Recognition. You probably already know Recognition already. It's a service that analyzes both images and videos, and then within those images, it identifies objects, concepts, people, faces, and also inappropriate contact. One cool thing, it can detect text, it can read the text, and it even returns a bounding box for the text. So in today's news, we've improved this text feature. Three improvements. We can now detect up to 100 words per image. The limit used to be 50. We've improved the accuracy of the text detection. And we've also increased performance, reducing latency by up to 70%. All this awesomeness is powered by machine learning. It's available to you now and at no extra cost. To learn a lot more about this, you can read the what's new. So that's all for this week. I sure hope you enjoyed my story and the launches. As I said earlier, I love your comments. Keep them all coming. I read them all. Subscribe, like, click through. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.